By now you've seen how quick the Highland Model 3 performance can be, but I bet you had no idea how efficient it really is when set up properly. My goal when I got this car was to prove that it was not only the quickest car in its price range, but that it can also do 340 miles of real-world highway range. I started in Apex, North Carolina and drove all the way to Rockville, Maryland without stopping at all. My car had over 150 pounds of stuff I needed to move up to Maryland, and I had my small dog with me. Now, this isn't a controlled test because I can't maintain a constant speed over this distance. Instead, this represents a real-world East Coast drive that someone might take. Highways west of the Mississippi often have much higher speed limits than the East Coast highways. Our speed limits are no more than 70 miles per hour, and the cops are very strict, especially in Virginia. I measured my average speed with a GPS app on my phone for the entire trip. My goal was to maintain at least 65 miles per hour average speed for as long as I could and then try to have at least a 60 mile an hour average speed for the entire trip once I started to hit traffic. The biggest issue with trying to do a range test on the East Coast is that you can't maintain one constant speed because of traffic. It is impossible to get through Richmond and the DC area without hitting some sort of stop and go traffic. That traffic will absolutely destroy your average speed, and if you try to make up time when the road is clear, it will destroy your efficiency. Instead, I tried to average as close to 70 miles per hour in between the cities and then just drive as efficiently as possible when there was rain or traffic. I charged all the way to 100% for free at the hotel I was staying at. The car actually reports 313 miles of total range with 100% state of charge. Tesla states the EPA ready range is 303 miles, but the car itself will actually go all the way to 313 miles of range. My goal was to drive 313 miles and then see how much battery was left after that. For the first 100 miles, I was maintaining 212 watt hours per mile consistently, and my average GPS measured speed was 67.5 miles per hour. That seemed to be the sweet spot for the car that gave me good efficiency without going slower than the flow of traffic. After 100 miles, I had a faster section of highway, and I was able to go with the flow of traffic at speed closer to 80 miles per hour. However, my efficiency really started to suffer then. It quickly jumped to 220 watt hours per mile, while my average speed only went from 67.5 miles per hour to 68.9 miles per hour, right at 140 miles into the trip. The extra speed wasn't worth it in terms of efficiency. Once you get above 70 miles per hour, wind resistance becomes the only factor that matters for efficiency. That is why the car suggests staying under 70 miles per hour as much as possible. I know out west that isn't a practical thing to do, but on the east coast it is a much easier thing to do. About 160 miles into the trip I started to hit Richmond traffic and it started raining. At that point there was nothing I could do but try to get through the city as efficiently as possible. It was rush hour and the rain slowed everything down. I finally got through the traffic and my average speed was down to 65.5 miles per hour and my average efficiency was just under 220 watt hours per mile at that point. I made up a little bit of time when I got to 247 miles into the trip. However, my average mile per hour only went from 65.5 miles per hour to 65.8 miles per hour, and I was still averaging right at 220 watt hours per mile at that point. I still had 26% state of charge left, so I was in great shape to easily exceed the 313 miles of rated range. However, I started to hit traffic well south of DC and my average speed really started to drop significantly. At almost 300 miles into the trip, I was already down to 61.7 miles per hour for my average speed, but my efficiency was consistently holding at 220 watt hours per mile. There is just no way to avoid traffic when driving on the east coast, especially on I-95 through the northeast. I got to my stop in North Bethesda, Maryland, but I still hadn't gone the 313 miles, which was my goal, so I continued north into Gaithersburg and then turned around and came back. I pulled into my garage with the trip computer showing 315 miles traveled since my last charge and that I had used 69 kilowatt hours. I had a GPS measured average speed of 61.6 miles per hour while I was on the highway and that took exactly 5 hours and 15 seconds. The real kicker was that I had 8% of battery left. The car was showing that 8% would get me 24 miles of EPA rated range or 28 miles of realistic range based on my last 30 miles of driving at 218 watt hours per mile. However, that doesn't take into account the 3.6 kilowatt hours of buffer the battery has below 0% state of charge. I estimate that if I really wanted to push the car past 0%, it might have been able to do as much as 16 more miles after it got to 0% state of charge. So in the end, the car achieved 315 miles of real world east coast highway miles, and it could have done over 340 miles if I ran it to 0 state of charge, or as much as 360 miles if I pushed it past 0 state of charge to where the battery actually ran out. Honestly, 5 hours was my absolute limit of driving continuously without stopping. I couldn't have driven another minute. My bladder just couldn't go any further than that, and my dog really wanted to get out of the car and stretch his legs. 
if we stopped for even 10 minutes at a charger, we could have added at least 100 more miles of range. So you must be asking yourself, how is my car so much more efficient than the other 2024 Highland Model 3 performance cars? The reason is that I switched from the stock 20-inch staggered Pirelli tires to 235-45-18 Hankook Ion Evo AS tires on T-Sportline TS5 wheels in a square setup. These are the exact same wheels and tires that I did my record quarter mile passes with. My overall goal in this was to prove that you can have efficiency, range, and straight line acceleration all in the same vehicle if you choose the correct tires. I did controlled testing around a 25 mile highway loop with both the stock 20 inch warp wheels and Pirelli tires and my 18 inch wheels and Hankook tires and the average efficiency for the 20 inch wheels was 230 watt hours per mile while the 18 inch wheels did 192 watt hours per mile all with GPS measured 59.8 mile per hour average speed. That is a 16% improvement for the 18 inch efficiency tires over the stock 20 inch summer tires. Now, I want to make it clear that you are giving up cornering and perhaps braking performance by switching to these all season tires. I'm not suggesting that this is something everyone should do. There's a clear trade off between summer tires and all season tires for cornering. However, I've shown that these all season tires can do some pretty incredible times for zero to 60 and quarter mile. If all you want is a Model 3 performance that is quick in a straight line and can easily achieve the rated range and beyond, then you might want to consider switching to 18 inch efficiency tires like these Hankooks. I still have the stock wheels and tires for those times I want to do hard cornering at the track. However, the ride comfort, noise reduction, and road hazard durability of the 18 inch wheels and tires makes me want to just keep them on year round. I don't have to worry about cold weather performance with these tires like I would with the summer tires. We don't get too much snow where I am so the all season tire is fine here but the summer tire would be really bad on those really cold days. If you have any questions about this video just leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.